I'm back again with an updated BL Touch guide for the Ender 3, once again with no wires cut and no key features left out. In my opinion, auto bed leveling makes 3D printing so much better. It just makes it fuss free, repeatable and reliable. BL Touch is also a big favorite of mine for achieving this. Now I've made several BL Touch videos before for various printers, including already making one for the Ender 3, but there is definitely demand for how to do it using the vanilla Marlin firmware. In a previous video, I showed you how to add that to your Ender 3. So in this video, we're gonna build on that and install a BL Touch. Once again, I promise that you won't have to cut any wires and you won't have to miss out on any key functionality to fit everything onto the main board. Let's get started with the physical install. First thing we're going to do is cut all of the existing cable ties that hold the valve and tube to the wiring that goes to the hot end. After this we're going to flip the printer upside down and do the exact same thing and now comes the worst job of the whole thing. I have an extension cable that is one and a half meters long and the job is to thread it up through the fiberglass sleeve all the way up to the hot end. I found this stuff would self heal if I put through something small and skinny like a screwdriver and careful not to crush the wires I could push it through bit by bit eventually reaching the other end. I think I was just getting a hang of this by the time it was over. Time to put all the cable ties back on. My tip is to cable tie the hot end bundle to the extruder stripper motor and that way it'll keep it out of the way and stop it from getting caught. On the underside I had 30 to 40 centimeters of cable left over. I'm not sure if a one meter cord would be long enough. That gets our cable in place. Let's do the wiring on the main board. We're going to use a pin 27 board for this guide to avoid having to cut any wires on the ribbon cable. Links for where to buy this are in the description. There's two plugs that we have to fit underneath and we're going to use a pin 27 board so we need to unplug the ribbon cable for the LCD and plug in the pin 27 board in its place. Now it is possible to get this misaligned so be very careful and then plug the LCD cable back in and move it to the side so you can access the three pin plug underneath. We're going to unplug the Z end stop wire. You can see the one's coming from the outside and it is labeled with Z as well. Once you pull it out, you need to inspect whether you have a two pin plug or a three pin plug. On this occasion, I got lucky and the two pins matched exactly. When you plug it in, you want the black to be next to the black wires and the white to be next to the existing white wires. The first time I did this on my original Ender 3, I had to make a slight modification because the plug that came with the BL Touch was three pins wide, even though only two pins were being used. If you get something small and pointy and push down on the little tubs, you have to pull out the pins and transfer them as you need to to get all the plugs matched up so it plugs straight in without having to cut any wires. Just be careful you get the correct orientation. It does make a difference and it will stop it from working. As I said earlier, you want the black wire next to the other black wires and the white wire next to the other white wires. If you have one of these dew point connectors, you can also plug it straight in. Just use a little hot glue to hold it in place. Now it's time to test the three pin plug and make sure the pins match your pin 27 board where they should be written on. Once again, if you need to make any changes, simply lift up the tab, push them out carefully, switch them around and plug them in in the correct orientation. I can't stress how important it is that you check this first. If you plug in the positive and negative backwards, you're gonna let out the magic smoke and you're gonna have a very bad day. Push the little tabs down to make sure nothing is loose and then you can simply plug it in and your installation on the main board is done. If you have any spare cabling, wrap it up neatly, push it out of the way away from any heat sinks. After that, you're free to put in the screws to close up the bottom of the machine. That's most of our wiring done, but we still need to print out a mount for our BL Touch. There are quite a few BL Touch mounts for the Ender 3 on Thingiverse now. I chose this one because it didn't need any support and I printed at 0.15 layer height. If you're fed through the cable correctly, you should have enough to come over and go into the BL Touch without being tight. After that, you can undo two screws holding on the fan cover. That will become completely loose and then you can get your new mount, put it into place and screw it in tightly. Mine fit perfectly. Carefully use a thin tool to push the cable through from the top and we're ready to plug it into our BL Touch. Hopefully you'll have enough slack that the wire is not pulled tight. I found by mounting it flush, when I pulled the pin down, it was about in line with the nozzle, which means the BL Touch is not sitting low enough. I therefore decided I would shim it with seven M3 washers, and this gives you a good chance to get everything even if it's not sitting perpendicular to the bed. I've done this several times before, it's always worked well, and this is the first time that I didn't drop washers everywhere. I must finally be getting better at this. Doing the same test again, I pull it down, and you can see it hits the ruler way before it touches the nozzle. If I need to, I can remove one or two washers to fine tune later on. Once you double check everything, pair on the machine, the BL Touch will go down and up twice to show you that it's wired correctly. 
Now don't be fooled, the printer doesn't know that the BL Touch is connected and that's because we haven't updated the firmware. I'm going to take you through step by step and we're going to pick up where we left off last time when we flashed Vanilla Marlin 1.1.9. So when we last left, we had compiled for standard Ender 3 and we were using 122,320 bytes out of a maximum of 130,048 bytes and that was 94% of our program space. First thing we're going to do is go through the changes needed to enable the BL Touch and then we'll deal with any problems that come up after that. Now all of these changes are going to be made in configuration.h and configuration underscore adv for advanced.h and I'll talk you through them one at a time. To find them, we're going to go Control F and then type in what I say, and it'll take you straight there. We're going to start by typing in N stop pull up. We're going to uncomment by deleting these two slashes here, and that is the line define end stop pull up zmin probe. We'll then scroll down to this section here, and the last line define zmin probe end stop inverting. We're going to change that to true for the BL Touch. Now we're up to the important bit. We're going to search for BL Touch. And we're going to uncomment this to define BL Touch. And inside this section here, we're going to add a line, and that is hashtag define servo zero underscore pin gap 27. That's going to tell it that we're using a pin 27 board, and it's going to overwrite elsewhere in the firmware where it thinks pin 27 is used by the buzzer. Now let's search for x underscore probe. And we get to the section where we tell it how big our probe is. I would always recommend measuring your own one with a ruler or calipers. And I measured mine at minus 41, minus 5. So you can see by this diagram here, that means it's 41 millimeters to the left of the nozzle and 5 millimeters forward of the nozzle. We're going to search for min underscore software. That's going to take us to the min software end stops. We're actually going to comment out the one for Z. This is going to help us when we're setting our Z offset for the probe. It's going to allow us to go below zero. So we have the full range of motion we need to set it accurately. We're going to search for bilinear, one word, and come down here and uncomment the third line, which is define auto bed leveling bilinear. So the firmware knows so far that we have a BL touch, but we haven't told it how we want to use it, what type of bed leveling. And bilinear is the one that doesn't take up too much space and works quite well. One more thing in this file, we're going to search for Z underscore safe. That's going to take us to Z safe homing. We're going to uncomment this to enable it. So this means after it homes X and Y, it's going to travel to the center of the bed so it can use the probe for Z. Otherwise the probe would be off the edge of the bed and nothing would trigger. That's it for configuration.h. We're going to come to our second one, configuration underscore ADV, and we're going to change two more things. We're going to search for baby step. Now baby stepping will already be on, and I highly recommend uncommenting the line in the middle here, define baby step Z probe offset. This makes it a one move operation to adjust our offset and then save it straight after. The other thing I like to do is bump up this multiplier, otherwise you'll be turning it all day for very little change. So if you find it's moving too much, you can make this number smaller, something like five or six, I would recommend if 10 is too big. That should be it. We're already to hit the tick and compile. As expected, we have an error. Let's expand this and see what's happening. If we scroll to the right, we can see that we are over the size of the Sanguino board by 8,976 bytes. We know that we're aiming for 130,000 bytes, give or take, and therefore we're more like 139,000 bytes. So what can we do? We need to disable things in the firmware to get it fitting onto the microcontroller. Now, one of the reasons the Ender 3 is so cheap is because it has a smaller, cheaper microcontroller. That means we need to remove some other functionality to get everything fitting for the BL Touch onto the main board. Now there are multiple options to do this, but I promise you won't be losing anything important. Let me run you through what they are, how much space they take up, and then you can make the final decision for your printer. The obvious one I would recommend doing is disabling the buzzer. It's no longer connected because of our pin 27 board. So we're gonna search for buzzer, come down to this section and simply slash slash at the front, and we have gotten rid of the speaker. The next piece of low hanging fruit is the boot screen. So we're going to search for boot screen. And 
it's going to say show boot screen. We're going to add a double forward slash again, and that is going to save us about one and a half thousand bytes. Now there's one feature of the Marlin firmware that people rarely use. I've never seen my slicer try to use it, and that's Arc support. We've switched back to configuration advanced, and we're going to search for Arc. It's pretty safe to turn it off by adding a double slash to the front of define arc support and that is going to save us just over 4000 bytes. Now other guides have you disabling the SD card or the EEPROM here but I wouldn't recommend those, they're very useful. You can however if you want cut down on some of the EEPROM features. If we do a search for M503 we can find a couple of lines here of interest. So by default this one is commented out and that's disable M503. It says here that it saves 2700 bytes. I found it was more like 3200. M503 is a command given to the printer via USB and it spits out all of the parameters so you can tune them from there. It's something I prefer to keep in, so I'm gonna leave it like this. This second one here, define EEPROM chit chat, removes the ability for the printer to talk back to the computer via USB. So be able to still send commands to it, but you won't be able to receive back confirmation or temperature readings or things like that. That one will save you around 900 bytes. Once again, I think it's pretty useful, so I'm gonna leave it on. By far the easiest thing to do to save space is to cut back on some of the things in the menus. And that doesn't mean that you're losing those features overall, it just means that you won't be able to access them to change them from the menu, and that's things like acceleration, jerk, etc. You should be able to put them in your start G code or set them via computer. We're gonna search for the word slim. Now there is a really drastic thing here where we can turn off all the LCD menus and save an enormous amount of space. That means you'll just have a status screen and nothing else. But by far the best option is to uncomment define slim LCD menus. And it's gonna cut down the amount of options that you see in the LCD menu, saving us a bunch of space. Almost 8,000 bytes to be exact. And that should put us well under what we need to be able to compile. Great success. You can see we have compiled successfully and we're only using 95% of the program storage space. That means you should have enough room to turn back on power loss recovery if you are already using it. And it also means you've got room for things like linear advance if you'd like to experiment with those later on. Assuming you've burnt your bootloader, we're ready to flash this to the printer. So there it is step by step. In case you missed it, it's time to pause the screen now. Here is a summary of my opinion on the various options that you have, how important they are, and most importantly, how much space they take up. If you're wondering about the slim LCD menus, well, most of the features disappear from the control motion menu. Here's a before and here's an after, and you can still set all of these things by a USB or with start G code, so they're not actually gone from the functionality of the printer. You will in return gain some BL touch menus where you can control the probe in various ways. So our physical install is done, our firmware is flashed, it's time to do our final steps to get up and printing. Remember to always test the homing with your finger first to avoid disaster. After that, you can do a G28 to home, followed by a G29, and that will do the mesh bed leveling. We've set it up for a 3x3 grid, and as you can see, it's not the fastest thing around. To use this as your print, simply add G29 after your G28 in your start G code. To set your Z offset, pick something really big and make it only one layer thick. As it's printing, go to the motion menu and change the Z offset. Turning it to the left puts the nozzle closer to the bed, turning it to the right lifts it further up. When the print is done and you've peeled it off and you're happy with it, go to the menu again and save your settings to the EEPROM. Now your offset will be saved for the next print. That's it, everything for you to follow to get your BL Touch fitted to the Ender 3 using vanilla Marlin firmware and the latest version to boot. If all of that seemed too hard for you, well, I have another option. If you're happy to pay just $1, there's a link in the description where you can buy a zip file of my two configuration files, simply unzip them, drop them into your Marlin folder, and then you'll be able to upload straight to your printer with everything configured as you see here. And that includes some advanced things from my advanced BL Touch video to speed things up and make the grid spacing of the probing symmetrical. Either way, hopefully you got all the information you need, including the links down in the description to the various things featured in this guide. Rest assured there's plenty more coming up for the Ender 3, including a temporary step backwards to disable the BL Touch to show a free option for those who want to do some bed leveling without spending any money. Hit subscribe so you don't miss that, and in the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.